What up, what up? Welcome on in to Inside Baylor Sports, the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. On today's show, we're previewing Saturday's matchup versus number one seeded USC for our Baylor women's basketball team. We'll tell you what to watch out for. We'll talk about USC and tell you a few keys to success for Baylor to come up with a victory. Don't forget, you can catch Inside Baylor Sports every weekday. You can also watch the video version for free over at BaylorPlus.com and on the Baylor Athletics YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, rate, and review the pod, and follow Baylor Plus today on X, Instagram, and Facebook. It's the official content network of Baylor Athletics. Think Netflix for your Baylor Bears. Download the app on your mobile device and sign up for your free seven-day trial today at BaylorPlus.com. It's Wednesday, March 27, 2024. Justin Hoff alongside 2019 National Champion Caitlin Bickle. You've been through this run before. You've been to the Sweet 16. The Bears are going back to the Sweet 16 the 16th time in program history. A really special to come up with that win. And Jada Walker, a career night. I know we've talked about her on the podcast the last couple days, but uh, wanted to get your take on that game. 28 points, 26 of which came in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. She was phenomenal. Um, and I think... You know, I think about, like, the fun part of that, and we've talked about it. I think, you know, their kind of motto all all season has kind of been, like, any person can have their night, you know. Um, and I think for her it's amazing. She obviously got to go back home. Um, she played great in the Vandy game. She played even, even more phenomenal. Couldn't have had a better game. Uh, this game had made some huge, huge plays for them when they needed it. Uh, and I think it's just great that the team also realized it. You know, I think sometimes you see certain teams, like, um, and it's so crazy because you think about the amount of scores we have, the amount of players that have, have come in from transfers and just some big time players that have scored maybe 20 plus points at their old schools. Um, but the fact that this team is selfless enough and smart enough to realize like, oh, like she's hitting, you know, like let's get it back to her. You know, there were several plays where it was very, very obvious of maybe Jana and Sarah were bringing up the ball. Maybe, maybe we were swinging in our offense and Asia got it and she was like, telling people to cut through so she could get the ball to Jada. Um, that was just, you know, something I noticed. I watched the game two, three times, like just kind of keying in on those things. And I, I think I love that aspect of the game, of the fact that they were all so selfless enough. They were locked in enough to realize, like, she's hitting. Let's keep going to her. It was Sarah in the first half. Let's keep going to Sarah. Um, so it was just great to see Jada be able to have that game. And, and I hope it continues in the tournament. Great win for the program. Just great to see them back to the Sweet 16 and uh, everybody feeling great right now. And uh, of course, on Monday night, you had a chance to watch the USC Kansas game. We'll get into USC. We'll tell you what their uh, team's about. Caitlin played with one of their teammates uh, or one of their players uh, back during her high school days. And uh, they're stout. They're a number one seed for a reason. And so we'll get into that. But uh, as you think about it, you know, Jada Walker, Sarah Andrews having a really good first half. You know, in order to advance in these tournaments, especially with this Baylor team, they're so balanced, the scoring, you're going to need a different player to kind of step up, and you don't necessarily know who it is. But I'm kind of thinking as you go up to USC and up to Portland, which, mind you, this game's played at the Moda Center where the Portland Trailblazers play. So great environment, great atmosphere for everyone uh, to play in, uh, you know, a pro arena like that. But you might think against USC, as we get into them, Four of their five players that they start are over six foot tall. So they're a very tall team and maybe the tallest team we played all season long. I know you've played against some tall teams, but I kind of leaning towards maybe some of our players that are over six feet. And maybe this might be a game where they might be the key player. And I'm kind of thinking of the Bellas, the Bugs, the Blackwells, the Edwards, those kind of players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially on the, the defensive end. <laughs> Um, you know, we've obviously had had some struggles in the past with size uh, defensively. Uh, and I think that will be a huge key. You know, I think staying out of foul trouble uh, for sure is going to be big. Obviously, we, we faced some foul trouble the last game. Luckily, Virginia Tech did too. Um, but I think defensively, our, our, our size needs to be locked in for sure because it's just going to be hard with that type of length. length. And then – it's also kind of just getting a, a feel out because you can go one of two ways. You know, you can use your size as well on the offensive end, even though they do have size or, you know, at certain points, maybe you use your, your speed, you know, even, even you think about 
you know, Dre Bella Bugs or Yaya is a little bit bigger of a guard, but all those players are really, really fast too. You know, and I think if you run the court, you run it hard, um, and you kind of use your speed and try to get those players in foul trouble based off of that, um, I think that's going to be a huge key. Um, just because I, I know some of their height is, is you know, we, we haven't really just played against a team with a bunch of six-footers, like, at every single spot. That's really difficult. Um, but I know Sarah has, has had to play against bigger guards. She does a great job. Um, I'm not sure who they're going to put on Juju, who they're going to put on certain people. Um, but obviously we know, you know, our defense has been phenomenal the past two games. So I think we just have to continue on with that and, and make it tough for them to score. If you look at USC on the season, they're 28 and five. And you look at some of their games, you think about, uh, what happened in the losses, right? Well, they did lose to Utah twice. Okay. And of course, Baylor beat Utah, a fully healthy Utah um, in terms of USC, their losses are against that at UCLA, another really good team with two seed right now at Utah lost by 20 at Colorado, who is also still playing right now, lost by four and then uh, home against Washington, kind of a slip up game there, lost by three and then lost to Utah at home by six. So those are the only losses on the season for this team. They defeated UCLA, Colorado, Stanford, Oregon State, beat Stanford twice, um, and beat UCLA twice as well. Um, so this is a team that's played in a lot of games, um, you know, obviously won the uh, the Pac-12 tournament title. But, um, yeah, they're, they're really good. Um, the one thing I noticed, the games that they lost – the opposing teams, they made at least seven three-pointers. And Utah made 10 and 11 in their two games. And we know Baylor has the ability to have that kind of game. And you think about a key to success in this one, it may be the three ball, right? It might be difficult for Sarah and Jada and others to finish in the lane with that traffic and with the high hands. But you could possibly shoot over the top and, and hit some threes. That could be a key to, to a win. Yeah, and, and I agree with, you know, obviously, like you said, I, I was thinking as soon as you listed the teams, they all have shooters. You know, I mean, I think about watching Colorado, Utah, you say like, like they all have a solid post inside to where maybe you have to trap or maybe, you know, there's a little bit of focus there, but then they all have shooters surrounding them. Um, and so I think obviously I, I still really want like Asia to be aggressive. You know, I, I think she's great when she's attacking and aggressive in the paint and, and maybe draw some people towards you. Same with Dre. Um, Bugs has done a good job of that, being confident the last couple games attacking, um, whether it's just facing up, ripping it, and, and driving to the hoop. Um, and if we do those things, it will open up our shooters. You know, it's going to make it easier on, on Sarah to get an open shot, on Bella to get an open shot, whether, you know, we get someone in rotation and yaya drives by someone, you know, so it's just those little things. Um, of if we're hitting, we're hitting, you know, I, I, you know, I always say if you're hitting, just, you know, keep shooting the ball. Uh, if it, if it keeps going in, then why not? Um, but I definitely don't want us to get in a state where we've had some games where we get too comfortable with it, where we, where we are aggressive and attacking downhill. Um, and then we just continuously keep missing, trying to figure something out. Um, and so I, I just want us to stay as aggressive as we have been in the last two games of this tournament, because I think that's been a huge success for us in, in getting teams to get in rotation and, and getting teams in foul trouble. Uh, and, and, you know, the best thing about that, like attacking is if you get them in foul trouble, you don't have to play against them. You know, you might as well just get them off the court. Um, so I think that's still going to be a huge factor. And then just knocking down open shots. Yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, thinking about it, uh, can we play two smaller guards against this team? You think about Jada and Sarah. We've liked to start those two. Is this one of those games where it might be difficult? You think about rebounding, scoring, playing defense, whatever it is. Okay. Can we play those two out there? What's your thoughts there? I think we can. And and I think that because I, I obviously – and that's why I was, you know, questioning the different matchups. You know, I, I think – Bella could possibly be great on Juju. Like, I, I think when you put Bella, I think, you know, a lot of them switched. You know, we had Gianna, Jada, and Bella, I think, on, on Amor uh, this past weekend, which are all great. 
you know, you can switch in some of those lineups. We do a ton of switching, but for this one, it's kind of, do we put Jada on, on the smaller kind of sharpshooter or do we try to, you know, use it, you know, use her in a different way and see if she can go against size. Um, I think obviously she'd be great on ball pressure for Juju. I just don't know size wise, you know, a lot of her shooting has, you've seen, you know, in her success has been over the top of people, whether they're tall or not. Um, but I think Sarah is okay against, against bigger guards. You know, I've seen her do that a lot when I've played with her and, and she does a great job at fronting guards at using her body really well. Um, it will just be the key aspect of, of boxing out for sure. I don't worry about that, but I guess we'll see how it goes guarding wise um, and rebounding wise for sure. Yeah. And uh, the good thing is Baylor has versatility in their lineup. I mean, you could do theoretically, you could have a lineup like uh, an Andrews, a Bella, Bugs, Blackwell, and Edwards. I mean, you could go to a bigger lineup, right? You think about playing, uh, this isn't a video game, but you think about playing 2K, you know, and you, you get that opportunity, you got like the big lineup, right? That's the big lineup for Baylor. And so Nikki, uh, as good of a coach as there is in the country, she'll figure out a scheme. We're just kind of throwing out some stuff as uh, obviously the team and uh, fans getting ready for this game and super excited about taking on USC. Let's dig into USC's personnel some. So watch them against Kansas. Kansas, I thought, put up a good fight. Uh, ended up losing by about 20, but they did, uh, you know, in the third quarter, had it close. And, you know, obviously the the player you got to look at for USC is Juju Watkins. But think, let's let's peel back a little bit. So USC last year, they were an eight seed. They lose in the first round to South Dakota State. Eight seed. In one season, they go from an eight seed to a one seed in one of the top teams in America. How how you ask? Well, they go out and get the number one overall ranked recruit. That's a big piece. Plus, you uh, you you find role players. Three of the five starters around her are transfers. Okay, and we're gonna dive into them as well. Then you got Raya, Raya Marshall, who's one of the top bigs in the country, a shot blocking a double double machine. And so you factor all that in together, the transfer portal, NIL, everything. You could literally take a team that's basically kind of middle of the road, just barely gets in the tournament as an eight seed and goes all the way up to a one seed in one season. You can do that now. It sounds a lot like professional sports. I mean, that's a lot of times, you know, you think about like those, uh, the Miami Heat uh, and all those different teams that go from average to great in one season. But UCA, USC did that. Yeah, and, and I will say it's not like it's uh, – I love that you're comparing it to professional. Um, but it's not like every every story is the same, you know. And, and I think about this because, obviously, um, when when Lindsey Gottlieb was at Cal Berkeley, like, they were one of my top schools. Um, she's a great coach, a, a great lady. Um, but I think she was so smart, and, and a lot of coaches don't do this. Like, Nikki, I thought, did this really well. You know, I, I think she really switched. Like, Bailey used to be a huge just – get in the post, get in the post. And, and Nikki has really gotten players that have fit her system. And so his coach Gottlieb for USC, you know, I think like you talk about it, it's not like, you know, it, it's not like they don't fit what she's trying to do. Like she has really solid role players. Marshall obviously stayed, um, which I think was, a, you know, a great factor for them, obviously also getting Juju. You kind of need mm -hmm. someone that's going to be in the post that's solid for them. Um, but I think she just got all the right pieces, you know, that, that fit her system, that kind of fit what she's wanting to do with that program. I will say not all programs get that lucky and, and that's successful with NIL. I, I don't think, uh, you know, all of those work in, in the best light of things, but she's done a really, really good job um, of getting those players in and, and really getting them uh, to, you know, kind of just play the way that, that she wants her system to be played. Yeah, I mean, it's just wild. You think about where they were last year and where they are now. Uh, the last time USC was in a Sweet 16, Juju Watkins wasn't born yet. So that's those are, those are facts, right? And uh, USC, they're in the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1994. I mean, this is not a program that generally makes the Sweet 16, but uh, this team, if you watch them on tape, they're legit and they're tall. 
And uh, as we said, four of the five starters are six feet or taller. Juju Watkins, second in the country in scoring at averaging nearly 27 points per game. She does more than just scoring those seven rebounds, three assists, two and a half steals and one and a half blocks. She averages nine main field goals on over 22 field goal attempts per game. She's going to chuck it. She's going to have a high volume shooter. She's going to have a lot of shots. A six threes. That's what she averages in terms of attempts per game. Averages over eight free throw attempts per game. She's going to get to the free throw line. She's really good there. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Keontae George last year and how she can kind of hang in the air and get to the line. Six foot two. And uh, the WNBA is a lot different than the NBA. But let's say the the financials were the same. She'd be a one and done player. She's that kind of player. Uh, no doubt about it, but uh, it's it's not, you know, a WNBA. They oftentimes will stay in college a little bit more and then go to the WNBA later. But, uh, yeah, she's really good. You got to watch out for her. Marshall, 6'4", junior center, number three all-time in block shots at USC. She's averaging 2.7 blocks per game in her career. 6'4", but has a high wingspan. She plays like she's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, averaging 10 and 10 on the season, and she can dunk, too. Um, didn't dunk last night. She had a finger roll that she missed. She was kind of halfway in between. Um, I think she should have dunked it, but, uh, yeah, she's pretty legit. Those are the two players you got to really watch out for, but it's not just those two. Now you get to the transfers in the starting lineup and you got to look at Mackenzie Forbes. She's a vet. Uh, you know her well, Caitlin. She started her career at Cal with Lindsay Gottlieb, no relation to Doug, but, uh, then transferred to Harvard, Harvard. Excuse me. She was part of the class of 2018, the same one as you, Caitlin. Caitlin, you were the number 29 player in the ESPN Hoop Girls. McKenzie was 35. So you know a thing or two about her, but uh, she's still playing ball. You know, you're you're uh, you're done as far as college, but she's still out there. She's got to be 23, 24 years old. She's a vet. Yeah, and 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 we talk about all the different pieces and so I love going over these pieces because I'm kind of thinking like oh how do you guard each individually how do we attack them um how do we you know I mean I'm thinking in the sense of like how would they take advantage of us and how would we take advantage of them you know what are kind of each team's weakness and you know I I look at uh Kenzie's game um and I obviously got to play with her throughout clubs since like middle school high school um she's just a great player Obviously, she had some transferring, you know, COVID had happened. Obviously, the Ivy League wasn't playing then. Um, so she's gotten a couple years and has finally kind of ended back up, Pac-12 again. Um, but she's just a great player. And and in a sense of, um, like, she just plays like, and you. we used to always say this when we were younger, but she just plays like a dude. Like, very finesse, very, like, nothing's going to be rushed. She's, like, she's probably my height or taller. Um, I would say, like, a good 6'2". Um, but strong, like she's never, you know, she's just like a really, really solid player. And I think when you have players like Juju and Marshall that we've talked about, and, and we've said this for our team too, like sometimes the focus goes, you know, on, on one or two players, you know, we, we look at our team of, you know, we have five or six, seven scores, you know, in a sense of the season of that have been some huge, huge, um, scores for us and, and, so that kind of takes focus away from certain people and that's where others can, can sort of succeed. Um, so I think for us, it's, it's kind of just playing solid, um, attacking their, their bigger guards, um, getting them in foul trouble. You know, you talk about Marshall being able to block, um, in the Virginia tech game, we got, we got their post in foul trouble, you know, and she couldn't play like the whole third quarter could only play in the fourth. Like, we need to almost take advantage of that. Maybe you put Dre at the five. She's been shooting really well lately. Bring that post out of the out of the paint. It's just different things that we need to take advantage of um, as the same that they'll probably do to us. You know, they're probably going to use their bigger guards and, and try to take advantage of maybe when we have a smaller lineup in and whatnot. So I'm really excited to see those different matchups. Yeah, and there's a couple other starters there to get to. Caitlin Davis, a 6'2 forward. She's a transfer from Columbia, fourth-year senior, also came from the Ivy League, uh, set out that 2021 season. Role player averages uh, six points and five, uh, six points and six rebounds per game. And then Kayla Padilla, a transfer from Penn. She's the shooter. She's a senior and uh, a sharp shooter for this team, as uh, men's basketball would say. You, that's an MD. Got to make dribble there. But, uh, yeah, they have uh, multiple seniors there, three seniors in the uh, starting lineup, 
a true freshman, number one overall rated recruit, and then Marshall, who's a junior, and then coming off the bench, Kayla Williams and Taylor Bigby, a couple players that played on last year's team that were uh, really, I think, uh, starting last year. Um, so now more in a reserved role with this team, but uh, got good depth there. This is a really good USC team, but they have five losses on the season. Utah beat them twice. They are beatable, right? You just have to play really, really well. I mean, Baylor's going to have to play their one of their best games of the season. You think back to Utah. You think back to on the road at Texas, uh, parts of that Virginia Tech game. That's what it's going to take to advance, and that's what it's going to take for a lot of teams, right? I don't care who you are. This time of the year, you're going to have to play your best game to move on to the Elite Eight. Yeah, definitely. And, and there's been some really, really tight games. There have been some great games to watch. Um but I think, like you said, like, obviously we're going to have to play some great basketball against this team. But I also just think, like, watching little kind of snippets, uh, I was going back and forth between a couple games um, Monday, but I didn't think at least Kansas did a great job of this. But, but um, like, USC, I didn't see a ton of fast breaks. You know, I saw a ton of them setting it up, you know, making sure they were running their offense or running, you know, like whatever they were kind of doing. Um, at least in the kind of the snippets that I watch of the game. Um, but I think with Baylor, Baylor's been so successful when we're getting getting hands on in, in the passing lanes, getting tips, creating chaos for the other team, um, and getting in transition, getting, you know, just getting what we do best. You know, we've always been great in transition. Um, and then on the other end, we, we've done a great job at, you know, handling the ball. You know, we didn't have a ton of turnovers against Virginia Tech. Um and obviously this is going to be a bigger team. So they're probably going to have more hands in the passing lanes than most. Um, so it's just continuing that, you know, don't take a, a possession for granted, like take care of the ball. And then it doesn't matter if they're bigger than you, you know, like cause chaos defensively. I think, I think Jada did a fantastic job at making a more in the tech game uncomfortable. You know, we saw, you know, at least I, I saw a few times where, you know, she was taking shots that she, you know, were too early in the shot clock or we were forcing her to kind of get something up. And, and I think we need to do the exact same thing this game. Um, and, and I think we could definitely be successful. Um, you do those two things, hit hit open shots and, and attack the attack the paint, then, you know, we could definitely win this game. Juju Watkins, she's the Batman. And Mackenzie Forbes is the Robin. That's what they said on the broadcast <laughs> last night. So, uh, and then Marshall, I don't know where Marshall lines up. She's just the <laughs> defender, right, for USC. But, hey, if I'm a player on the Baylor women's basketball team, this is exactly what I want. I want the one seed, okay? I want to go up against the best. I want Juju Watkins. We know she's really good. You got to contest her shots. She's going to take 20 shots in this game. That's just a fact. I mean, she's going to throw up a bunch of shots, just make them difficult. She's going to make some. She's going to make some difficult shots, much like Keontae George did last year. Um, but uh, make her earn it, right? If she goes 6 of 20 from the field, then you just have to take care of the others and uh, do all the things that you talked about, the turnovers, and just take care of the basketball. And, hey, when you're open, make the shots, make your free throws like they did the other night. Um, Jada was tremendous at the free throw line, 9 of 10. I mean, that's, that's nearly perfection. But uh, USC, like we said, they have five losses on the season. This is a team that can be beat. And... Um, really anybody in this this tournament can be beat besides South Carolina. South Carolina is undefeated on the season. You could say they don't have any warts. Everybody else does have warts. And even them could be beat. You know, they're not quite like the 2012 Baylor women's basketball team, but they are really good. But thankfully, we're not playing in South Carolina in this one. We're playing uh, the uh, the USC out there in the West, you know, not USC East. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun Saturday, 5 o'clock on ESPN and just a footnote there on Lindsey Gottlieb. Got to give her a shout out. So was that uh, Cal, was the head coach there, and then became a pioneer of sorts. She became the first NCAA women's head coach to be hired by an NBA team. She went to the Cleveland Cavaliers for John Beeline, a former Michigan coach I know well, um, and it didn't work out for Beeline there with Cleveland, but she came back to college, back to the Pac-12. Well, sort of. Now I'm about to be the Big Ten. But uh, at USC, right? And so one of the rivals to Cal and then, uh, you know, really put this team together and just give her credit, right? You hit the transfer portal. You get three of five starters there. You keep Marshall. You go out and get the top player in America and Juju Watkins. And here you are as a one seed. So 
it's really shaping up to be a tremendous game. Lindsey and Nikki, I'm sure they know each other. Um, you know, I know Nikki's so big on the pro game and WNBA and NBA and watching the sets and everything. So this should be a lot of fun to see these two teams go toe to toe. I'm hoping this game comes down to, uh, well, hopefully we can uh, run out. And it's not too nerve wracking and we can hold this one uh, convincingly, but uh, hope this game comes down to the wire and should be a fun one on Saturday. Absolutely. I'm excited. Very different teams, but I think it's going to be a great game and I'm, I'm really excited to see those matchups this weekend. And uh, as we finish out here, just a, a note about women's basketball in the tournament. So there's been a lot of chatter. Uh, Holly Rowe got in the mix last night with the Iowa game uh, because there was a lot of uh, referee stuff going on. We're not going to get into that. It, it seemed like uh, Iowa's a free throw line. I think someone said 30 times in West Virginia five. That doesn't add up right. But uh, she was uh, all about keeping the games at the host sites. Caitlin, you've been on the record of saying we need to move them like the men, and that would help with upsets and just more parity in the game, which I do definitely do not disagree with. But you look at the first uh, two rounds, two number five seeds and a number seven broke through to the Sweet 16. Outside of that, it was all chalk. This is what we thought would happen. We said this. Now, I think this is where things are going to get wild. I think this weekend is where it will not be chalk. You're playing in Portland and Albany. At neutral site locations, I think there'll be a lot of parity. And this weekend, spotlight the women's basketball in the NCAA tournament. It doesn't matter if it's Caitlin Clark, whoever. Uh, let's just let's be real. Let's make it about these teams and not so much individuals. We got great basketball that's going to be going on this weekend. And part of that's going to be because at neutral sites. Yeah, I'm very excited for neutral sites. Um, you know, we've talked about it several times, and, and I was, have watched a lot of basketball this past weekend, and and there were definitely some games that were, were very far-fetched in the refing. I will say it was definitely disappointing um, because it was very clear, you know. And, and I think, obviously, those, those reps were – all those calls were going for the home teams in the games that I had watched, which was – you know, and it happened multiple games. Um, and whether you want to say, oh, the crowd has an effect on that or not, it does. Um, you, always, you always see it in, in big games like that. And I think – a lot of people, I've seen a ton of people talking about it, actually, since we, we talked about it, which is funny, um, about getting neutral sites. And people are like, oh, but, but it's the money we want to crowd. We're at the point in women's basketball where if we're still needing a home game to get a crowd, then we're not where we need to be. You know, and I think we are there. I would say five, six years ago, no. There was no way we were there. We weren't. I, even when we won my freshman year, we were not there. You know, and I and I will admit that um, it's just not how it was. Maybe UConn would have been the only one back in the day that, you know, people would be traveling across the country. You always see fans from Iowa, Iowa State, doesn't matter where you're at, they're going to be there. Um, but we're at the point in time where if we want to kind of switch over to neutral sites, in my opinion, this is the time. You know, we talk about, you, you know, there's some incredible teams out there, but also you now do have some of those bigger names. You have NIL that's getting individuals out there even more on platforms um, and, the, and their teams on platforms. And I think, you know, if you want to transition at some point, like the next year or two is, is a good testing. You know, it's not like you have to do it permanently. You can you can do it for a year or two. See, see what happens. See if the attendance happens. Because the last few years, attendance has gone up watching the watching has gone up percentage wise every single year the past couple of years um so i am definitely still in favor of it you know even even seeing all the talk about basketball on twitter instagram everything um or x as we call it now but i i'm definitely for kind of attempting neutral sites um instead of host sites well you got some uh some naysayers there and I'm kind of, hey, whatever's best for the game, but I'm all about, yeah, I know in the NBA, it's the stars that kind of run it, but uh, just quality basketball. The the women's game and the men's game are very different, um, and you can go down a, a rabbit hole, the differences there, but they are very different games, and they're uh, to each his own, and I think uh, I enjoy watching both of them, and I know this much. Lots of great games coming up this weekend, but the game that I'm zoned in on, of course, is Saturday at 4.30 on ESPN your fifth seeded Bears going up against the number one seeded USC Trojans. That'll do it for today's edition of Inside Baylor Sports, a sport and story production. Thanks for listening. For Caitlin Bickle, I'm Justin Hoff. Have a great Wednesday and sick of Bears.